John Clark, uh, sitting up on the side of the bed, transferred to this chair, and then you're going to put him back to bed. Assuming that it's physiologically okay for him to do that. How do you know it's physiologically okay for him to do that? You're, you're going to check the vital signs. So, for instance, uh, you're going to get him sitting up. So, when you first come in here, you're going to get the vital signs, uh, before vital signs, right, including blood pressure. Then I'd like you to see the vital signs when you get him sitting up. So, remember, you're going to have to hit the blood pressure or have your aid hit the, the button for the blood pressure. Uh, what, what if his O2 sats are 86% when you get him sitting up? Uh, do we need to lay him back down right away? No. No. First of all, we can ha have him breathe. We haven't gone over pursed lip breathing, but it's a typical <coughs> thing you do. Breathe in through your nose and out through pursed lips. Try that first, and a lot of times the O2 sats will go up. So <laughs> if the O2 sats fall below 90, that doesn't mean immediately lay them down. Let's see if we can get them up first. What if they stay below 90 with him sitting up? Then you might need to lay them down. <coughs> what if you get them up and his blood pressure drops to 110 over 72? How do you know if he is? Well, that's where it was when it started. Yeah. Yeah. It just stopped. We saw it drop, but not his actual thing. Okay. But how do you know? How do you know if he's okay? Okay, so you might say, how are you feeling? Are you dizzy? Are you lightheaded? And if everything's okay, even that there was some drop there, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's, he can't be transferred. So we need to ask, see how he's doing. So we'll demonstrate that in just a minute. Um, okay, and then when you get him to the chair, I want you to get vital signs there too. So again, you'll need to hit the, the blood pressure. So you're going to check vital signs uh, actually four times overall. When you first start, before you get started, when you get him sitting up, when he's in the chair, and then when you put him back to bed, you can just see where he is. What if you get him up in the chair and you still need to take his blood pressure, but he feels like he's going to pass out? Say, hang on, Mr. Clark, while I get the blood pressure. Is that a good approach? Mm -hmm. What would be a good approach? Okay, and he's getting even dizzier. That's what I would do. If someone's getting dizzy and lightheaded and it's not <laughs> going away, I would get them back to bed as soon as possible. All right. That, can, 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 yeah, can go ahead. Sure. Why is that important, especially in ICU, that instead of reclining back in that chair, getting him back into the bed? If, if that patient codes, compressions and stuff in that bed is going to be impossible. And so this is the best place. <clears throat> if, if things look like they're going really, really bad, this is the best place for it. Okay. And that's one of the things we're looking at is how you handle the, the different things. I don't think we'll do anything crazy with the vital signs, but <laughs> just to see how you respond. All right. Okay. So, shall we do a demo? Sure. Okay. So, uh, we're going to need this space over here. I'm going to need to move this table yeah, out. I must have been behind. Uh, yeah. 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 See if we can squeeze it out, just get it out of the way. Uh, yeah. Can you come this way? Can you press that down? And then that's all you want to do. On the yours and stuff? Yeah. Your job. Okay. So let's kind of think about what you're going to do when you come in here. Again, you're going to knock on the door. He's going to say, come in. You've got hand sanitizer, gloves that you're going to have on. And then you're going to talk to him. Okay? because he'll answer you. <laughs> so you're going to say, hello, Mr. Clark. I'm Joey Jeffers. I'm a student physical therapist assistant. This is Keith. He's going to help me out. How are you doing today? And he's going to, he's going to answer you. 
right? So by the way, I'm, I'm the PTA and uh, Keith is being the physical therapy aide for this demonstration. Uh, okay, and what else are you gonna ask? Uh, you're gonna ask the pain scale. So ask for a number and location. the location of that, right? Okay, and then you're gonna get all your vital signs and if everything looks good there, you've explained to him in simple terms what's about to happen. We have to get him ready uh, to get to the chair. So a few things to consider. Are we uh, going to have a nurse in there for it? Oh. Before? Do you want to? Well, I, it, I don't know. We, that probably makes sense to do that. Yeah. So, well, okay. Do you want to no, talk? So uh, if it's Mr. Jenkins or I out there, you're going to check with it. We'll be the nurse. And you just ask us if it, uh, tell us what you plan to do. Ask, a, ask us if it's okay. and We'll say something to you. All right, so assuming we say it's okay, you'll come in here. Uh, does anybody know what these sleeves are right here? That's right, to prevent blood clots. That's right, uh, increase circulation to prevent blood clots. This doesn't really work, so there is an on and off switch there, but it, it doesn't actually come on. Okay, so we're going to take off these sleeves, and uh, the tubes don't, aren't actually made for these sleeves, so they come off real easy. Uh, but we're going to take those off, all right, and uh, in fact, should we keep these on or take them off completely? Okay, all right, so we'll go ahead and take them off. All right, notice he's got non-skid socks on, so I put those on this morning, so those will be on when you, when you see the patient. All right, and so we've got some tubes here, right? Anybody know what that is? That's a chest tube. All right, do you want to pull out a chest tube? No. That's kind of a big deal if you pull that out, so we're going to really try not to do that. Now, we're going to come over here, so we're going to arrange the lines so that it makes sense. What's that? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put the catheter over on this side. Bring the chest tube. Mr. Jenkins has that. And it does go on the floor. Now, keep it below the level of his chest. That's right. All right, try not to knock it over, and this one falls over easily, I'll just say that. Keep that down. All right, now, is there anything we can take off of here? We've got an IV that needs to stay there. All right, he's got his portable oxygen. Sometimes you can take that off, but in this case, he needs to have that on. All right, and we're just going to leave the blood pressure cuff on because technically that needs to be on for it to actually register blood pressure over there. All right, so we're gonna, uh, actually I'm just gonna leave that on for right now. All right, anything I can do to the bed to help out here? Oh. All right, so I'm gonna flatten out the bed. All right, Mr. Clark, is it okay if I lay you back? Uh, some people may not be able to lie back, so we're gonna assume that he can. A lot of times there'll be, if there's a contraindication, it'll be posted, and it's generally 30 degrees, but they can't go beyond uh, 30 degrees down. All right, and that's 30 degrees right there. By the way, there's a, there's a gauge over here to tell you what angle the head is right there. All right, so uh, Mr. Clark, we're going to get you sitting up on the side of the bed, and what do you think would be a good method for us to do that? Log rolling. All right, we're going to do some log rolling. We could do a sitting pivot type of transfer. That could work too, but we're gonna go ahead and do log rolling. A few things about the mannequin. All right, he does have some hip and knee flexion, but it's kind of stiff once you get to about 40 degrees or so. Uh, he does have uh, plantar flexion, can dorsiflex to neutral, but uh, not actively, obviously. <laughs> All right, even though we're going to assume, though, that he's <laughs> capable of active movement, so I'm going to ask him to help out uh, as we do this. Now, the big difficulty with Mr. Clark is he has no elbow flexion. That elbow just stays extended, and that's a big pain. So, and that's a part of this also is to kind of see how you work with somebody who's difficult and different from what you're expected because that happens a lot. Okay, oh, we got one more tube here, uh, and we don't want to pull this out. This is the power cord. 
<laughs> All right, so we're just going to assume it's another type of tube that you would see in a healthcare setting. But we definitely don't want to pull that out. Okay, before I do the log roll, anything else about the bed that might be helpful? Okay, yep, I could raise it up higher. Although it's up pretty high. Okay, anything else? I can get this rail out of the way carefully, watching all the lines. Be careful when you're raising or lowering beds because you think you got all the lines perfect and then you start to raise it mm. and it starts to stretch it or reverse going down. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's not worth it to try to bend up his hips and knees because they won't stay up there and they're hard to hold up there. His legs don't cross. So I'm just getting them close together and we're going to do a log roll. You're going to see, I'm going to go ahead and grab him by the scapulas and the pelvis. Mr. Jenkins is going to use the pad under the bed to help roll him to his side. It's called a chuck. Well, most of, have you been over to chucks? No. Uh, most of, in, the, in acute care, skilled nursing, when patients in a bed, you always put a chuck underneath them. And what it helps with rolling, helps with sliding them up. Uh, but the big thing is it's absorbent. So if they have a bowel movement, something like that, it does not get to the sheet. And so they can just roll, take it out, and... So they're really, really handy. What we're using is just a regular sheet. And hospitals have different ideas about getting on the bed with patients? Yes. Uh, some don't want you to get on the bed. Some uh, is okay with it. And the, the um, most of them are okay with it as long as you take some, put some kind of protective barrier down. And Do you want to use this? Yeah. That's, that was that's in the chair. actually a chuck. Right. So that's, a, that's a true chuck. We'll use that. So I'm on. going to get on the bed as a... Um, and use this as my barrier. All right. All right. Are we ready? Yep. All right, Mr. Clark, on the count of three, we're going to roll over to your right side. Help us as much as you can. On three. One, two, three. There we go. Very nice. You doing okay? He's going to say something. <laughs> All right. So Mr. Jenkins is going to set up his pad there so that he can put a knee on the bed or a couple of knees on the bed. All right. All right. You got him up here. Yes. Let me just make sure all the lines are okay. And he is heavy. Yep. All right. I'm going to move your feet toward me a little bit, Mr. Clark. All right. Let's get this out of the way. All right. So one of the things I'm going to try to do is make sure his lines don't get tangled up as we go over. Let me get you a little further. All right. All right. On the count of three, we're going to sit you up. Help us out as much as you can. You ready, Keith? Yep. One, two, three. For transfer on that, um, when I was coming up with him, putting your hand on the shoulder right here, and that, that facilitates them to come up, it makes it so much easier to get someone up if you put your hand there and just pull up. Okay, and the, the big thing is he'll tend to get caught, his hand, because his elbows don't flex. All right. All right. And we got to get him a little closer to the edge. I'm going to scoot you forward. Try to scoot your side forward. There we go. All right. A little bit more. Okay. You doing okay, Mr. Clark? Are you dizzy or lightheaded? All right. And this is a time um, to take the blood pressure. So I could be holding him. <coughs> Keith could go down there and hit the button, get the blood pressure, check the vital signs. All right. I've got him. So do you want to get stuff set up for the transfer? Um, actually, how about I take him and you move the chair? Okay. You got him? Yep. All right, where do we want the chair? Close. Let's try not to have room for him to fall down. And I'll let Keith, uh, it might be locked actually already. All right, we've got to get all the lines. I can get it, I can take care okay, of that. You're gonna get the lines, I've got him here. All right, and one thing that I'm gonna to need to do is have these lines set up so that he's not gonna be sitting on them or tangled up once we get into the, the chair which actually I think we're in a good place right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's what 
until uh, we'll leave this okay. off until we get them in the chair. Anytime you're with a monitor and you hear a different tone, that's an indication that something has changed significantly. All right, I'm going to lower the bed down when you're ready. That should be good. Thank you. All right, can we do the four basics? We're going to try, all right? So try to scoot forward, Mr. Clark. That's it. Let's scoot forward. That's good. All right. Let me see you put your feet on the ground. Oh, boy. These are some stiff knees. <laughs> put them on the ground there. All right. Can you uh, lower the bed down a little bit more, please? Should we have his gown tied in the back? Uh, Normally. <laughs> but this is... This is keeping it from going all the way around. And it's not quite as much of a huge concern here because we're going to the chair. We're not leaving the room or doing anything like that. So, all right, let me make sure this is far enough over. All right, let's try to get the feet down. All right, now, uh, many of you are strong enough. Ooh, uh, can someone hand me the gate belt that's over there? And I should have put that on before Keith uh, left. Uh, some of you are going to be strong enough to lift him up, but I really want you to try not to do that. I want you to try to actually, you got him? Yep. Try to stay up there for me, Mr. Clark. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, let's get your feet on the ground. You're going to lean forward toward me. Uh, try to block his legs as much as you can and try to pivot on his feet so that you're not totally lifting him up in the air. All right. This is a good down. place to be for the aid for two reasons. One, I can guide these lines. But if, if he goes to stand him up and something happens, going that way is fine, safe. Going that way is safe. He's, I can keep him from going back that way. This is the area that is, can be dangerous. And if I'm in here, then I can help guide. So this is good for two reasons. All right, you ready over there? Yep. You ready, Mr. Clark, on the count of three? You stand up and let's turn over and sit down. Ready? One, two, and three. There we go. All right. Okay, watch I my had tools. my hand on the gate belt, but I didn't help. Because if I'm helping, then he can't judge his assistance level. I have my hand there just in case something happens, then I can begin to help. All right. And can you hold that chair while I scoot it? Yep. Let's try to scoot back. That's it. Over here. All right. Are we all the way back as far as you can tell? Yeah, that's good. Right. Oh, actually, lean back a little bit. Okay, that's good. That's good. You all right, Mr. Clark? We're going to get vital signs again. I'm going to check 